welcome back to Brews and Books. I'm your host Camille and today I've got a special guest, a little boyfriend and today boyfriend. <laughs> the I'll, boyfriend. I'll take that okay. <laughs> <laughs> and today we've got what's on his bunk shelf, graphic novels edition. So let's do fears. <laughs> All right so let's do the guest first. Okay. What do you uh, have? I have from Whitestone Brewery of Cedar Park, Texas. That's right here local. Um, I bought this because I like the cover. It's called Keyboard Gangster uh, West Coast Hazy IPA. And if you can see, it is a nerd on a keyboard with a trolling shirt. Um, you got the cheesy poofs. He got his <laughs> lotion and napkins. Uh, he got a pizza controller. He even has a My Little Pony poster. Um, I saw this and I was like, yeah, I got it. It's, like, it's nice. Lava lamp. And of course, he's a lazy fat fuck. So he has the, whatever, the transportation. The uh, little, oh, uh, what are they called? Hoverboards. Yes. You're not hovering shit, so whatever. <sighs> oh, sorry, Mom, I cussed, but it's going to happen. All right. But hi, I'm Justin. <laughs> I'm the little boyfriend. He's not little. Okay. That's all I have to say about that. I'm five eight and three fourths. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have got Combat Wombat. It, it's a big boy. Um, she likes big boys. I do like big boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is by Rogue. I have never had this before. It's got 7.2 ALC. Which that cover. That cover is great. It is. It is a really wombat. Good. It's a karate cool kicking. Wombat. Wombat. Combat. Combat Wombat. wombat. Combat Wombat. Cobra Kai. The bad side. <laughs> um, Rogue. I don't know. I th I picked this up. It looked good. It is Portland, a Oregon. Sour Northeast style India pale ale with a blood orange and grapefruit. So it's a lot going on in here. Let's go ahead and crack each of these open. Ready? And One, two, three. Cheers. Two. All right. Gotcha. A Mondo pint, a Mondo ghost. con. Little butt ghost. A little ghost. There you go. All right. She has a better palate than I do and a better nose. My olfactory system is the worst. He's and old. My palate, I don't know. I taste something, I'm like, yeah, that's nutritious. And she's like, I taste caramel. <laughs> and terracotta. <laughs> terracotta. Uh, cheers. Cheers to beer. Cheers to books. <laughs> cheers. Thoughts? Like I said, my palate is not that great. I taste, it's an IPA with not too much kick of hops. Pretty smooth. And I just realized the theme as well, there is a karate suit with samurai swords right here. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I think hazy sometimes, they try to throw in the citrus flavor, but I think the hazy overlaps the hops. Okay. And so in a way it's like not a hoppy hit. It's more like, almost like a pale ale, like, Mid taste, okay. but less I less hops. That's really so it's not really a hoppy IP at all. But it is six point five ABV, which we down with. That's pretty good all day. Pretty good. West Coast IPAs aren't that hoppy, but they definitely tend to lean a lot more towards uh, less hoppy. Yours is seven point two. Yeah, mine's a little uh, little stinker. <clears throat> um, mine is very good. I this is actually really really sweet uh in terms of a sour because most sours are very tart they leave no room for sugar but okay. this one has a good chunk of sugar in it it has like a saison flavor to it, it almost does. a farmhouse hill yeah and uh, there's definitely that citrus aspect the citrus hits you pretty hard and it's more the blood orange than it is i taste the, the blood orange fruit. i do because and a little mix of grapefruit so sours are great but they hurt coming back up that's also very true. This Stay is away. pretty good. Okay, so today we are questioning Justin on his graphic novel tastes. <laughs> AKA Jablar, to anyone out there who knows me as that. Yes, my name is Justin, if you didn't know. And I'll link all of his lovely social medias 
in the description box. Cool. So we were talking about his bookshelf, his lovely bookshelf. I like it because it's brown, it's wooden, and he's got a lot of stuff on here. We will do a series of what's on his bookshelf. It's gonna be fun, y'all. We're gonna have a good, good time. But it's also a QA. and a <laughs> Excuse me, I'm and I want, sorry. I wanna, I'm asking a question. Who has a deeper dialect, a Southern dialect? She's had a few to drink. You're gonna hear it. Hey, y'all. That's How's true. it going? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's been on this channel has noticed that my southern drawl comes out when I drink a ton. Uh, everyone knows I'm from Texas. That's 2,000 pounds. Uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to get straight into the questions. We had a good chunk of questions, a good chunk of good questions. So question numero number one. -oh. That's not Spanish. It's not. Not, I, I didn't claim it. Okay, whatever. That's, that's jargon. Is that the right word? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, we'll look we're not there. English majors. Oh. Everyone, we're not English majors. Yeah, obviously. I'm an Shout out to English majors. The e English. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Question one. What's your favorite Alan Moore story? So, Alan Moore is famous, most famous, he has a lot of movies, or comic books converted to movies. Uh, you know Watchmen. I got Watchmen up here, of course. Everyone, you can find that trade anywhere in any comic book store. V for Vendetta. And, you know, people saw Natalie Portman being... Natalie Portman? Getting captive by the guy who's trying to shut down the system. Oh, yeah. Good reads, right? Um, a comic book that changed my life, honestly, and some, one of the best writing I've ever read and it just some of the best connection I ever had was with Swamp Thing. Um, Swamp Thing was made by Bernie Wrightson and I'm going blank. Sorry Swamp Thing fans that I'm going blank to this but Alan Moore took over the title in the 1980s uh, at issue 20 or so. So basically when I bought this volume one of Swamp Thing I read it and I'm like, what the hell is going on right now? And I went back to the store. I was like, why is this? It's Alan, written by Alan Moore, art by Stephen Bissett. Um, the original series covers Tom Waits, Stephen Bissett. They were around all the time. Um, Lynn, Lynn Wynn and Bernie Wrightson were the creators. <laughs> and Alan Moore just skyrocketed with his sci-fi. And this is the cover of it. And I am such... A lover of this book, of this title, that I got this tattooed on my leg. I took this to a tattoo artist, and I was like, I want this stencil. I'll show you the tattoo. Let me get in this awkward pose real quick. We love awkward poses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that is my Alan Moore tattoo. There she is. There, there she blows. Am I right? I get a lot of compliments on this, actually. It's really good. It's For people quality. who don't even know what it is, my mom thinks it's the Grinch. Most of my family does. Why you got the Grinch tattooed on your leg? And I'm just like, well, it's not the Grinch. I had a guy come up to me at Walmart one time and he goes, yo, bro, no homo. I'm not gay or anything, but that tattoo on the back of your leg is dope as shit. And I was like, yeah, cool. He's like, I'm not gay. I'm not into you, but that tattoo is dope. And I was like, okay, I wasn't asking. Thanks for the compliment. It was strange. Question number two. Have you read Deadly Class? Mm. And do you like it? Uh, RK, I appreciate your questions because they're all so valid. Just hitting the right spots. You are hitting the right spots. You know why? RK is my favorite. I'll have to collapse my... Ah! Fair read lady class. He's got all of them. I, I have the volumes He's of the trades. I, this is one of the few comic books that I collect the single issues as well. Um, they had the TV show on the Sci-Fi Network. They did one season. And for once... In a while, like, I was watching with a friend who I was giving these on reads, and me and him would watch it, and we were like, dude, we love this shit. Like, it's, it's, it was actually a really good compatible uh, TV show that went with it, but they put it on the Sci Fi Network, so it didn't, it didn't kick off. But you know the power of this comic book? The Russo brothers, who did all the Avengers, they started out Rest of Development producers have produced so many good Marvel movies. They love this comic book so much that they started backing it up with money and producing it themselves. Rick Remender, 
To me, he is the Frank Miller of the 20th century. My whole bookshelf is still a Rick Remender. Deadly Class is, if you like, it's a step out of the Marvel DC universe with the whole superhero cape and doing this and they keep spitting out all these different titles over and over. I love Deadly Class. Deadly Class to me is the same level of Swamp Thing for my love. Like I wait for every single issue that comes out. I have artwork in my room of Deadly Class. Deadly Class is amazing. I highly recommend it. Yes, right. nice question. Okay, next question, number three. Number three, what's the first graphic novel you recommended to Camille? That is I, no one knew. Shoot, um, you know, I think this might be a short question, short answer, because uh, I believe it was Deadly Class issue one. I think it was Volume Deadly one, class. yeah. I was just like, this is like, this is where graphic novels break. He talks so much. I do. He talks more than I do. I don't know about that. A rarity. <laughs> okay so question number four what would you recommend now that you know me what would i recommend now that i know you yeah if it's off my bookshelf off your bookshelf i would say southern bastards um actually this is we didn't really we didn't plan early for what we're talking about here here i'll go from home coming um, this is the fourth, third volume of Southern Bastards. I'm waiting for more of it. Um, but it's by Jason Aaron and Jason Latour. Um, it is about an Arkansas high school football team. But in this Arkansas area, the football coach is like a mafia boss. Say, for instance, they have a scout on a player from another team. This coach will send people over to that guy's house and break his legs so he can't play against them. Yeah. Um, but an old timer who used to live there in the, the city and it's in Arkansas. So it has like kind of rebel characters, kind of Confederate flag kind of bullshit. Um, but one guy comes back and he's like, Hey, what the hell is he? he's playing the football team? And he's kind of like, what the hell? He's an old man. He's kind of like, what the hell's going on here? Like, what's all this, you know, mafia kind of thing you've got going in the city. And I won't spoil anything that happens to him, but his daughter comes back. And his daughter is an ex-Marine. Uh, she is a black female. And she has some confrontations with the locals there to the point where some little kid mouths off to her and she has to go off. And, you know, some fucking... We couldn't definitely find what a hill... Please, here's a question for y'all. What's the difference between a hillbilly and a redneck? Yes, please. Please. Someone tell us. Someone tell us. In the comments, please give us some reference. But you can see this... Lady with an American flag T-shirt is trying to stab this, this you know, ex-Marine. She's handling herself very well. And I recommend it because she sits down and watches football games with me. If you didn't know, Camille loves sports fights. If we're watching football <laughs> or something, she, lo she loves just the brawls that break out in basketball. This is true. Football. She's like, Whoo! like as soon as someone starts pushing, you know, after the whistle, she's into it. And the fact that this is about, you know, football and it's kind of has a rough story with it, I think she would love it. And honestly, the fact that it, it, they're, they need to come out volume four because they're going to expand more on this female character. And I know you love strong female characters as well, especially black female characters, because, you know, she is a very strong black female. Is that me? <laughs> so the bastards. I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get, I'll, I'll get to it. Thank you, Jasmine, at Part of My Imagination for those questions. Thank you. All right, number five-o. Oh. Um, if you could only recommend one graphic novel, oh, and so it begins. Spaghetti. All right. If you could only recommend one graphic novel. To get someone into them, what would it be? Just into reading comic books and graphic novels, period? Period. I think I have a choice of two of these. Ah, I don't, I'll pick one. Pick one. Since most, not to say Americans, most people in this world watch Batman movies. So I appreciate Batman stories, but classic. Batman year one. 
this was the first comic book that I saw that you don't need a storyline where people were talking to each other. Uh, in this comic book, it made me realize that from the Batman movies, Batman, when he's investigating, when he's hovering on a, you know, a building, looking at something that's going on, a crime, he has a conscious dialogue that goes through the whole time. And that's when I realized you don't need a lot of action. Like, you know, Batman plans out things before he does it. But while he's waiting over the criminals, he has a dialogue that's going on. I think there's a scene in year one where he sees uh, a prostitute getting attacked, if you will. And there's a, a younger girl one and an, an older one. And this guy's attacking them. Batman jumps down to help them. And in his dialogue, he's like, all right, the guy behind me has a gun. I can, I can hear him pulling out of his, you know, it's all in his mind that he's thinking of this. But as he's doing this, the little girl who's a prostitute pulls out a knife and stabs him in the leg. And he doesn't expect it. And it's kind of like he goes, whoa. Like he, so this was the first comic book where you can hear dialogue in a man's consciousness or a character's consciousness. And that's what I like about this one. And so I think with that, people will... First time readers will be like, whoa, this wasn't I expected. Not what I expected from comic books. Yeah. Batman Year One. Renowned, known, I recommend it. You haven't read it yet. I haven't read it. Honestly, I think Batman has a Virgo and or a Capricorn. He used to have an Earth sign. I'm so. sure you can look up his birthday. I probably could. I should. And I saw something the other day. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> uh, why doesn't Batman wear a full mask? He doesn't want cops to know he's... He wants cops to know that he's white. That's a true statement. You can edit that out. I feel that. Too. <laughs> I feel that. I think my followers would uh, appreciate that. I like that question. Year one, read it. Year one. I'm going to read it. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to do a quick shout out. To anyone who's into novels of Stephen King. Oh. American Vampire. Scott Snyder. Also an amazing modern writer in graphic novels. American Vampire, um, Scott Snyder would write an issue. Stephen King would write an issue. Scott Snyder, and they would, they would do it, you know, in sequence. So basically, they would have to play off each other's endings. So if you like Stephen King, for all your novelists, people out there, American Vampire is really good. Nice. Ghost butts. All right. Question number, are we on... Five? No, we're on six, I think. Yeah, we're on six. Uh, how did you two meet? It is the modern world. The internet. Bumble! Um, she responded to me, and I think we had a phone conversation. I think Maybe it was a day later. after. Probably, no, it was a day after, I believe. Was it? it was pretty pretty fast when we start talking on the phone and I think I started making fun of Twilight I chance I chance some chances and she read the Twilight books and then as she's talking to me on the phone she took a Twilight personality he test he sent me the Twilight I did test. not send you that at he all did. no uh, he did. she looked it up herself no no, no I wouldn't no. waste my time looking at that he sent it to me I did not and I took it. She took, I did not send that to you at all. I got Bella, which is trash because I'm not Well, even one of the superpowers was, what was it? Uh, extreme compassion ex or something like that. Compassion. It was like unlimited <laughs> compassion. I'm like, what the, like, really? That's a power? You can have just so much compassion? I don't know. I have a lot weird. of compassion though. But we had a phone call and then, you know, honestly, the phone call probably happened a day after we chatted online. It really did. I don't know. It was like, I don't know. she gave me her number. That's not how it happened. Yeah, she did. We went and got wings. He got some big red wings, and then I was just like, "Wow!" A oh, big red. It was big redded so big red soda wings. coated wings. I guess she was impressed by that. I don't know. I wasn't. She wasn't. I think I started talking about Swamp Thing nerd stuff, and yeah, he nerded out. I and... really <laughs> haven't met a super nerd <laughs> like we can sit down and play Call of Duty with each other. Yeah. You know, play video games, you know, read books, recommendations. You know, there's been times where it's like, even before all this quarantine thing, it's like, I don't really want to go out this weekend. Do you, would you be cool with just staying inside and like reading books? And she just goes, 
I, I didn't realize, but pretty much she was, pretty much her heart shattered right there and goes, yes. I was like, Please. I would love that. <laughs> I was like, let's stay inside. Let's read. Let's, you know. Also, society, we need to read more. Read. This is a guys. good time to do it. It's important. Thankfully, on this community, like, everyone on here reads. But we need to push the masses. Fucking read. It's important. It's crucial. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, we met on Bumble. We met on Bumble. Yes. We did. Online. And it's been great. It's been good. Yeah. We're having a blast. We're both from Houston. Yee. NASCAR City. I say that because there's so many billboards there. I love Houston, okay? I love y'all. But it's dusty there. Dusty as <laughs> fuck. <laughs> there's so many billboards everywhere. I was driving, we went to visit, and I was like, I feel like I'm in a, like, an advertisement NASCAR race <laughs> that will not end. True. Okay, shout out to some Houston peeps. I love y'all to death. The H. <laughs> Astros represent you all day. <laughs> Bill O'Brien, get the hell out of our city, please. Fuck you, Bill. Love Houston Nights, but that city is a concrete jungle of advertisement. Truly. All Love right. y'all. <laughs> We're going to lose some fans right there. Truly. <laughs> all right. All right. That's sick. We're not on Savion. Savion. Do you have any favorite comics in common? Oh. I mean. I don't think we. Um, of course, like every other person. <laughs> We both read Saga. I'll say that. Saga. That. Here's our opinion. I'm glad she had, here we can share an opinion on this that yes. we've shared. So shout out to Saga. Shout out. Good story, right? But when I go into the comic book store with new people who don't really read comics that much, they go, oh, I've heard about this Saga. I'm like, you know why? Because everyone and their mother has heard of Saga. Saga is the hipster of comic books. Truly. And I bet if I picked it up, like, I have some of the single issues, like from, I think, probably 10 to like maybe 25 or 30, I was collecting the single issues, and I never really collected the volumes that I was reading through there, but it's just like everyone and their mom was reading that, and it's the hipster, there's great characters, there's good characters in there, but every time it was like, oh, I heard of this, I've heard of this, like, you know why, because everyone's heard of that, yeah. like, as an indie comic, like outside of the Marvel DC universe, Everyone's heard of it. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, it's so great. Blah, blah. And it's like, and I talked to her and I was like, what's your opinion on Saga? Come see, come saga. And yeah, well, you, we've read it, but we put it down because yeah. it was just, it's such a common thing. And literally the characters in there sometimes are like dressed as hipsters and yeah. they're just like, oh, I have this magic power and I'm wearing a fucking fedora right now and doing jumping jacks and overalls. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Like... <laughs> It's a comic book that I think we both read and we put down. Yeah. And other than that, I think she's read Descenders issue one. Yeah, I've read issue one. I think Descenders you is uh, what read is it? the New World. Watercolor. I have not read the New World. That's something new you picked up. So that's not something. Blah, blah. He's gotta read it. He's gonna. But read honestly, it. it's it's good because I have a whole bookshelf that I'm like, you need to read this. But she has a whole list of things she's reading right now. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to be like, hey, you should read this. Yeah. Because we're constantly going to the comic book store now. That's true. And picking up new things. <laughs> um, but I do recommend right now, I have been plowing through the Dr. Stone mangas. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all. And as I'm reading them and laughing my ass off at this, I have show her some artwork and everything, and it's amazing. Um, yeah, I, think, I don't know. I think for the most part, I mean, I've read Dead... I've started Deadly Class, so that I've started on. Sex Criminals. Okay, I'll say Sex Criminals. That's something that we have both read. We both think it's trash. I don't think it's trash. I'm oh. still going to read it. I think it's it's like a 7 out of 10 for me. It is a 3 out of 10 for me. See? I will not read it again. I'm done. Okay. All right, next question. Um... Um, do you hate any of each other's favorites? I don't think so. Not yet, at least. Well, she's read Twilight, and I'm just... No, but favorite comics. Graphic novels. I don't think so. We haven't, like, in-depth, or I... He's read a lot that... He has a lot that he's read. I have a lot that I've read. 
and we haven't like exchanged a ton so we have so much to read once again we're reading our own things <laughs> like there's just so much that we haven't hit yet and i think for the most part we kind of have the same taste in terms of graphic novels and i we just have a pretty good solid foundation of what we like and a lot of the times i like what he likes and he likes what i like and i definitely i will make her read swamp thing he will oh, and i look forward to reading it yeah, next so. question okay so all of those questions were from kelsey and cheers to kelsey because i appreciate them so so much i appreciate it. uh what uh appreciate that's what i said folks she said appreciate which tells you she's from houston I'm from Houston, y'all. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, last question. But it, like from the followers, because I think I still have questions. Okay. What is your favorite book memory? Oh man, book memory. Mm -hmm. Like just a chat a section yeah. of a book that just hit me. Yeah. Oh man. So many. There's so many. You have to pick one now. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. Um, controversial coming up. He loves controversy. A book. Say what you want about this, Arthur. A book that got me into. Because when I was in high school, I wasn't the kid who was like reading books is dumb. I was actually the kid in your English class when you had to got you had to read. The Great Gatsby, and you had to read 1984. You the had Canterbury to read, Tales. You had to read Canterbury Tales. You had to read... The Mice and Men. Yes. And you had to read um, uh, Huckleberry to Finn. Uh, to kill those, those typical books. I was the guy, the, per, the student who read those books, and it was easy to me. And someone recommended a book to me called The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. Um, Ayn Rand's controversial because a lot of re Republicans, they use some of her quotes... She's been long dead, and I think she would turn over in her grave if she knew that fucking privileged Republicans were like, who is John Gout? You know, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, in her masterpiece, Atlas Shrug, she did support monopolies, and she supported very heavy-handed capitalism. You know, didn't want socialism, this and that. And from that side, she came from, she escapes uh, communist Russia. And it's extreme back in the day, like in the 1940s. She escaped there. And I think Fountainhead, Ayn Rand's book, was her artist book where she was a struggling artist who wanted to put out work that had integrity behind it. That basically, when you put out art, people are going to judge it. They're going to, you know, you're going to have people who like it. You're going to have people who are mid about it. You're going to have people who are just like, this is trash. And in this book, she lays out in a analogy of America and the society she lives in, what integrity is. And this book has pushed, when I read this book, her, you can say what you want about her philosophy, but her writing, the way she sets up a scene that, you know, basically builds up in your head, you know, the walls of the building they're in, the, the way the images, with her words, she makes it in your head. Like the way she describes the scenes, it's amazing. It's one of his favorites. There you go. If you don't know, now you know. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on. All right, so that's all the questions. Um, thank you, Tony, for sending me that question. I love you, Tony. Tony. All right, so. We have one more question and then we're done with this video. Last question is, French. what's your least favorite comic that you've read so far? Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be straight with you. Saw the cover. Look, it's fucking uh, Shaggy. He is a hipster, pretty much. 
Daphne. Daphne is like a hardcore chick. Or you is know, that Velma? That's no, Daphne. That's Daphne. Uh, Fred, you know, they're still together, you know, and Velma, super smart. And then Scooby, he actually has a eyepiece. Bionic eye? He has a bionic eye that pretty much shows emojis and for what he's representing. Um, love the artwork, love the idea. Um, the great Jim Lee actually does all the covers. Um, credit to him for that. It is good concept. Uh, apocalypse, stuff hits the fan. Instead of people turning into zombies, they're just turning into like the novelty stuff like a group of people will turn into mummies group of people will turn into vampires group of people will turn into you know zombies of course and then group of people will turn into demons so they get attacked by the typical stuff that they get attacked in in their shows but there's many frames where they're just like arguing with each other in like a store that they're like you know trying to ransack and get supplies from after this whole this stuff went down and so there's just a lot of stuff where like Daphne's pretty much a hard ass and she's just like pointing a gun at like Velma and she's like, you're the problem behind all this. And they're just arguing. And I asked a friend of mine, a coworker of mine who, uh, who reads a lot of comic books. Yeah, I picked this up, blah, blah. I was like, the artwork's cool. And he pretty much said it goes nowhere. Like it pretty much, I, I just can't stand a frame where two people are arguing. The last issue they're arguing about the same exact thing. Don't waste your time. They probably bent that. I don't care. I, I liked it. I was going to get more of it. Don't waste your time. Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. Don't waste your time, folks. As you saw here first. Don't waste your time. But those are all the questions. Question for you. Oh, there's a question for moi. Yeah. Me. What is... Nerd wise, okay. your favorite thing about me. What is my favorite thing about him? Nerd wise. Oh, uh, right. Well, you already know the main reason why I swiped wherever, I think, whatever it's left or right, you know, who cares, um, was because you read. But I think the most nerdiest, read. it has to be a book. No, anything. Oh, um, I think because I can be as nerdy as possible and you're as nerdy back to me yeah. as possible. Surprise each other. So we literally read each other's levels and it's, it's out of this world how much <laughs> nerd we can like. And suddenly I go, well. <laughs> and I'll be and like. And then and the cotton and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that happens often. It literally does. I, it, I, I just cannot describe how often it happens enough. But <laughs> dance the makeshift Cotton Eye Joe. We makeshift Cotton Eye Joe. And, and honestly, I think for me, uh, I know there's girls, there's females out there who play video games, but the fact that I can do like, you know, some most girlfriends, I think, boyfriends playing Call of Duty, it's like girlfriends in the back on her cell phone bored and it kind of puts a rift in relationships i'm playing call of duty we just played five games together it's true and she was number one every time i killed she has like a two point kd ratio and 25 kills and everything and i'm just like damn this is this is cool yeah i like that yeah so that's us yeah nerding out we're just nerding out here having a good time yeah and tokyo ghosts um, Another this, Rick Remender. This is just a shirt that he gave me that he did not want to wear. This is a Chinese extra large. <laughs> you know when those come in, you know. And this is like a medium on me. So. But yeah, so that 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 is what's on my boyfriend's shelf. Graphic novel edition. A lot more. We'll go make another video. We will. Get some stuff to explore. Yeah, more books, more graphic novels. We'll probably do a, a book haul next. Yeah. Swamp Thing, Deadly Class. We'll do you. Dr. Stone. Those are my three Dr. Stone is right really now. good. And to sign off. Coda. Coda. I haven't read it yet. Simon Spurrier. Uh, we're also reading a new comic book that just came out. It's on issue, about to go on issue three, called Alienated. Yeah, that's really, that's but a if, good one. For the D&D &D people out there, the people who love dragons and horses and stuff like that, uh, Coda is about a old uh, baron 
basically imagine the apocalypse happening in the magic era. So when there's dragons, magic, everything, and then there's a world where all the magic gets sucked out of the world and there's a, there's a limited supply of magic. And so Coda uh, is a character named Hmm, Hum, because when people go, what's your name? He goes, Hmm. So people call him Hum. Um, I think just, this is the new comic book. It, it, I read it and it's, it's probably my favorite one right now. That is his uh, Pinta unicorn, Pinta, Pentacorn. Hi, this Jones. this unicorn has five horns, and he, all, everything he says is explicit, 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 explicit. Yeah. They don't. Everything he says is just. You can see it's it's just signs because he's cussing the whole time, and he eats people for him. Basically protects him. You can see he jumps on this guy trying to rob him, and then he splatters into blood. And I recommend Coda. This is the new read that I picked up. Coda's really good. Amazing. But that's all I got for you. Till next will, time. This is a long video. I will not give my recommendations. Dactions. This is here we are. We've made it to the end. With a little mm. twang as possible. Fine. Um Alright y'all, so that was our little uh, graphic novel, what's on his bookshelf, and uh, we're just gonna, I'll make sure of course I leave all of the descriptions in the box down below, I'll leave all his social media, my social media, um, and I will link everyone who pitched in questions and gave a little insight, and of course if you always have questions, comments, please leave them down in the comment section. Um, but as always, cheers. Cheers to beer. Cheers to books. Cheers to books. Bye y'all. <laughs> <Sign out. laughs>